I'm here to talk about Shakespeare. As I have mentioned before, I am trying to read through everything that Shakespeare ever wrote, and this will be my third year trying to read through it. I have read 17 of his plays and all of his sonnets, so I'm trying to get through the rest of the plays. And I just want to talk about kind of how I approach Shakespeare's plays and what I think about them so far and kind of what I'm looking forward to as I go forward and try to read more of them. The next Shakespearean play that I'm going to be reading is Measure for Measure and I'm going to be reading it together with Julia from Books Under the Bed and I'll put a link to her channel down below. We're going to chat about the play a little bit and then we're both going to post reviews about what we thought about Measure for Measure by the bard William Shakespeare. I have kind of a love-hate relationship with the bard. When I love his play, then I really love it. And when I'm just kind of mediocre about his writing, then I really am very indifferent to it. Sometimes I am just blown away. I am completely amazed by the plot and the writing and just the richness of the characters. And other times I'm left completely flat. What happened, William? Your characters are boring and your plot goes nowhere. What, were you drunk when you wrote this? I have my big, massive, complete Shakespeare. And Julia and I will be reading Measure for Measure. I like the illustrations in this book, but it's just so heavy. Oh my gosh. I think I just broke my shoulder doing that. Ugh. The way I approach reading a Shakespeare play is I kind of want to imagine myself as if I were an audience member back in the day. And I just want to go to the theater and have a good time. I want to be entertained. I want to be told an interesting story with interesting characters. I want to laugh a little bit and I want to cry a little bit. And I just want to be generally entertained. I don't really approach Shakespeare from a very analytical point of view. I'm not trying to analyze what works and what doesn't work and why is the grand bard the most wonderful writer in the world? Um, I don't really care about that. I just want to enjoy myself. Very seldom do I read any commentaries about the plays or try to analyze them from a scholarly point of view. I mean, that's something, that's not something that I'm averse to. But at the moment, I'm just reading for pleasure. I just want to enjoy what I'm reading. So if you're looking for a lot of deep philosophical meaning, you're not going to find that on my channel. Not really. I tend to look more at the bigger picture. What was the overall theme of the book or the play? What really worked in the writing? And what were some of the characters that really touched me? You know, it's about connecting with a story and being impacted by it. So far, my very favorite Shakespeare is Much Ado About Nothing. I just love the characters. I love the back and forth between Beatrice and Benedict. They're so sassy. My second favorite is Midsummer Night's Dream. I really like that one because it's just so magical and imaginative. It's kind of mystical and it just feels like when magic is involved, anything could happen. And it usually does. My third favorite is, predictably, Romeo and Juliet. I pretty much had the entire play memorized when I was 15 because I just kept reading it over and over and over again. The richness of the language in that one is particularly good. Although I always sort of feel like Shakespeare's kind of making fun of the young lovers. It's like, really? You're 14 and you think you're in love? That's so cute. Because all of the love scenes are just really over the top in Romeo and Juliet, which you don't see a lot of in most of his other plays. I think my fourth favorite is probably either Hamlet or Macbeth. There are just so many famous phrases in those, and there's a reason they're famous, y'all, because it's stinking good writing. I really loved As You Like It. It's just hilarious all the way through. It just seems like nobody knows what they want and they just fall in love at the drop of a hat and it's like, okay, this is hilarious. All's Well That Ends Well was one of the ones that I kind of ended up hating. I was just like, why is this character doing what they're doing? Bertram is a total jerk. And just why does Helen love him? It doesn't make any sense. I just hated the characters. And the characters that were supposed to be comical just got on my nerves. Definitely not a fan of All's Well That Ends Well. 
Troilus and Cressida is a lesser well-known play of Shakespeare's, and I can kind of see why it's lesser known, because it wasn't that great. The writing was just sort of disjointed somehow. There were some good scenes, and there were a couple of characters that I really liked, and it was interesting to sort of see them developing throughout the play. But for the most part, it was just sort of... eh. The ending was kind of unresolved, too, and this seems to be a fault of Shakespeare's. He just likes to kind of throw things together at the end. It's like, wait, what? That's all? Well, what happened? Well, why did they do that? It doesn't, you know, sometimes his endings, it feels like he just kind of threw it together at the last second. And there's all of these strings that are just kind of left hanging. Another thing of Shakespeare's that really gets on my nerves is when women dress up like men and they go around in disguise. Really, Shakespeare? I mean, if you did that once, you did that twice. Okay, that's a valid plot point. But really, if I have to read about another woman who dressed up like a man just so she can get anything done, I swear I'm going to throw the book at the wall. Find some new plot devices, Shakespeare, please. I really liked King Lear. It was just so fascinating. The plot of this one is just all intricate and you're just like, wow, what is going on? This is incredible. But then in the end, it's a tragedy and I just hate it when all my favorite characters die. So still a good one, but then it's like, why? Why the tragedy all the time? Why couldn't you have made that one a comedy? Why couldn't they have a happy ending? But I guess that shows what good writing it is, because it really made me care about the characters, and I wanted them to have a happy ending. Another one of the lesser-known plays that is absolutely one of my favorites is Cymbeline. This one is incredible. I don't know why it's not better known. The plot moves quickly along. There's not any of these tomfoolery stuff that I don't like in his other plays. I love the character of Inigen. She's so spunky and dashing and she's just delightful. I love her brothers too. They're so brave and true. And even the villain is really well painted. Yakimo is just like, ooh, he's horrible. Oh, I hate him so much. So the characters in that one, in Cymbeline, are just really, really endearing. So if you've read most of the popular Shakespeare's and you're looking for another really good one, Cymbeline. Go read that one. I generally like most of the Bard's histories that I've read so far. Henry IV, parts one and two, are of course wonderful. And I loved Anthony and Cleopatra. That one was really interesting. And I like to sort of imagine, hey, that's the way it could have happened in real life. Two Gentlemen of Verona was another one that was kind of, eh, it was good, but not really. It was funny in parts, but I really hated all the banter between the two servants. It just didn't seem to have any point to it. It didn't serve any purpose in the plot, and it was just annoying. I know it was supposed to be comical, but maybe I just don't get the jokes from way back in the olden times. And this is another one where a woman dresses up as a man, and I'm just sick of it already. Another one that I did like was Twelfth Night. That one was pretty good. I like how the twins are all constantly being mistaken for each other. That always made me laugh. And the traditional love triangle makes for all sorts of hilarity. So, hopefully I will have a lot more to say about Shakespeare in the coming months because I'll be reading more of his plays and I will definitely be having a review on Measure for Measure together with Julia from Books Under the Bed. Thanks for watching, and remember, the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world.